was just telling Logan that, and Ben, one of the things that she's really affected by the movement, she gets pretty distracted. And so it's gonna create, it, it's an example of why the cameras make it tough um, to film for, for just lots of reasons, but that's one of them. Um, and that's one of them that's relatively new because typically most of the dogs didn't get bothered that much. Um, she is, she's a little spooky about that. So uh, will she settle in? Probably. Does it affect it? Yes. And so the other thing obviously is, you know, these conversations, they take away from the focus with the dog. But so I'm going to see what I do. I'm going to see how that goes. I do think it's important to try to explain some stuff. Um, but I also think it's going to be maybe broken up and to explain some stuff and then just train the way I would if the cameras weren't there or try to at least. Um, one thing that we're going to do today that if the cameras weren't here yesterday, I probably would have done it differently is we got distracted with, I'm sure I, we worked on more than just heel work today. It's just heel work. So today I actually brought her out, carried her out. I had her, I had the lead in my hand. I carried her out so that she didn't have a chance to run around. She didn't have a chance to free run. I didn't have to work on recall in a distracting setting before I could get into heel work because this isn't going to be a recall issue or a session. This is going to be about heel work. So I want her to focus on one small thing today and that's figure out where heel position actually is. Ultimately, eventually, um, it, you know, our plan is off lead. We want all of our dogs to work off lead, but it's got to start on lead. And so flat collar again today, um, she's responding really well to it. She's very smart. I've noticed that, you know, in, in the last couple of weeks, but uh, just in walking from the truck to here, which is not very far, she's really paying attention to her position. That's what heel work is. Heel is understanding that you need to be right here. So it's really the, the idea. I, I don't think heel, heel is not taking dogs for walks. It's not, it's the dog understanding what the position is. And so when I say heel, that means they come and get in position. So heel and recall might overlap because if I say here, the dog's gonna come to me. If I say heel, they should understand that what heel actually means is go get on his side. And so um, that's bigger picture stuff, but we're not even using the word heel. I'm not combining any type of verbal cue to this right now. I'm just trying to get her to understand where she should be to turn pressure off, which means if she gets out too far, we tap her. If she gets back too far, I tap her or I encourage her to come to me. And then when about the time she gets out of position, I usually change directions. So that's like a really cliff notes version of what we're doing today with heel. But I'm gonna put her down. I'm gonna get her moving. I'm gonna vary my pace a little bit and see how she does. Um, it's gonna be short and sweet. And then from here, I will take her in and put her in her kennel. Um, that idea of taking her for walks, it's, it's like 30 some degrees. She's shaking, she's shivering. It's, it isn't warm, it feels like spring to me, but it is in the 30s today, which it hasn't been for a long time. So, but let's get to it. I'm just gonna go back and forth. This is the idea of people are surprised that when I say, you know, heel work doesn't take much space. I do like it outside as opposed to inside. Um, it might be something you start with inside first. You're gonna see, the problem is that you're gonna see is she's very good at it very quickly. This is literally the second time we've done this. She's gonna probably be pretty damn good at it. Um, if she was a wild bucking bronco, if she was digging in and not coming with me, if she was like throwing fits, what I would do is just, I would, I would win those battles. I wouldn't allow her to quit my direction and what I wanna do. I'd win those battles and then we'd move on in our training. So I'm gonna show you, we'll see how she does, but like when she, it's probably gonna be at a micro um, level of what you might, now one thing I'm gonna have to get good at with her is my mechanics to keep that lead out of her mouth. So I'm gonna move because it's easier for me to do that when I'm moving. But already she's got wonderful eyes. She's really looking up at me. I'm not stopping, I'm continuing to move, but I'm moving at a pretty slow pace. I'm moving slower than she would like to move and I'm letting her work out the kinks here. I've got my hand up here because I don't need a lot of pressure, but what I'm trying to do is position the lead, the clip and the collar out of her mouth, out of the way of her mouth. So you see where I've got it back, her laying kind of on the top of her back and on her, eventually on her shoulder is where it's gonna go. Good. Good. So I don't want it to hang down in front of her mouth because she's going to nip at it. So when she hangs down, I'm just going to bump her. I just bumped her there. Good. Speed her up. Good. Nope. I'm not going to let her get sniffing. I'm not going to let her get too far away. She's, she's trying different things right now. She's trying to move away from me a little bit. Come on. Come on. 
Good. Nice little eyes to me. Good. Come on. Come on. Good. When I say eyes, I mean looking up at me. Good. Come on. So she gets distracted there, so I tap her and I say, no, let's go this way. One thing I'm looking at too is her tail. Her tail is different than the Labrador. So she, she moves with a high tail all the time. I don't think it's as clear of a, of a body language thing. Typically a high tail I don't like. My labs, I won't let them walk with a high tail. To me, that's them telling me they're the boss. It's really a strong dominant thing. Um, Mason's dog Chief does it. We're gonna actually share some information on that that, I've, that I filmed. But look at her get kind of playing here a little bit. She wants to go fast and run. So I just move her at my pace. I'm gonna be quiet because I think it'll be easier. Logan, I'm gonna have you stop for just a second. I'm gonna turn here. Right there. So I gave her a chance. I'm gonna turn again, Logan. And give her a chance. Good, she came with me, good, good. So she, no so I tell her, good. Last time I corrected her because she didn't come with me. Right there, come on, good. So I gave her a little pop. Let's see how she does here. Good, come on, 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 good, good. Give her a chance, good girl, come on. Always turning away from her, it's easier. She's not ready for me to turn into her yet. She doesn't know this game yet. Good, there's nice. Nice with me, but she's a little behind, so we bump her out in front. Good. She wanted to go behind me, I bumped her over. Good, now she gets a little far out in front. Come on. Good. She wants to go behind, we turn. No. There's, she wanted to get at that lead with her mouth. Good. There's a beaut. No. Good. I like how she checked up her speed. She's just trying to get a feel for where the hell am I supposed to be right now? Good. Good. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, when she slows down, I speed up. Good. Good. And I'm going to stop. Good. Good. I'm going to stop and I'm going to give her a little bit of praise. Pretty quick here, we're going to work on sit. I've not even taught this dog to sit yet. She's 13 weeks old. Good. We'll do that here pretty quick because I think I can tie that <coughs> sit into this heel work pretty easily. Come on, come on. She's paying attention to Logan, so I got to get her focus. Good. Come on. Good. Nope. Little bumps when she goes behind me. Good. There's a nice turn. She came with me. She wants to go behind me, I bump her. She's got to understand if she gets in that spot, it's uncomfortable. Good. That's very good right there. You're in a good spot. Now this way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. There. Look at that little high head too. Very good. Beautiful eyes looking at me. Come this way. Come on. Good. There's a good dog. Get out from behind me. So the little bump when she goes behind me, she's starting to learn. I go back there, he's going to tap me. Good. Come on. Good. Come on, good. And now I'm just gonna take a little break. Good, and I don't mind this nice little steady stand. And I go down to pet her and she starts getting a little antsy. But I don't mind that steady stand because the more I can get her in a habit of doing that, the easier I think it's gonna be for me down the road when I try to woe her. And we're probably not gonna say woe. Uh, I've decided not to use the command woe. I'm gonna use something else, but we'll explain that more later. Good, good. Good, heel. Really nice position right there. Very good. Very good. Come on, there. Come on, come on. Ugh. That's a. That was my fault. That wasn't good management of the lead there. I had the lead get in the way. Come on. Nope. Come on. Come on. Good. Good girl. Just a touch. I had to bump her with her. A little bit of pressure. Very good. Come on, come on, come on. There's a good dog. Good. And there's that little stop that I like. Good. So I'm actually going to encourage the idea of stopping like that. Now, just to get a little ambitious here, 
teal her out and just see what she does with a little pressure up on the lead. Sit, sit, sit. Good, good, good girl. First time sitting for me. Good, very good. Heel, come on, sit, sit. Little pressure on the butt. Sit, good, sit, good, good, not, sit, good, good. Good girl. That's a good girl. Come on. Sit. Sit. Good. Good. And we could do this with a little bit of kibble and it'd probably help too. And I might do that at dinner time, but I've kind of gotten away from it with this dog in particular because I just haven't had a need because she oftentimes does that where a lot of times when I stop, she stops and pauses like that. And where with my labs, I usually get them to come to me and I say, they come to me and they don't wanna just stand still. So I usually try to end it. I try to put a period at the end of the sentence and the, the period is sit. So usually those labs come into me and I go sit and they sit and that's kind of like, okay, conclusion. Where her, she comes to me a lot of times or stops at the heel and stays stationary. She's, you know, she's a little antsy here, but I had that pause out of her. So I almost get that period in the sentence to end the action. Good, good. So the action ended, the action was walking. We came to a stop, we're done. So now stop. Instead of sitting and making that be the period with her, I've been having her just stand. <clears throat> but you also can tell that, you know, pretty short attention span. Good, but I'm gonna take that as a session. That's a lesson, short, sweet, successful. Really liked how her positioning was a few times. It wasn't all the time, it wasn't all the time. And, and you can tell like, so she's decided, well, I wanna change, I wanna do something different. No, we're not doing anything different right now. I know you're antsy. It's a lot like my little Lillian. She's three years old and she, has, she doesn't have a lot of patience. So when we decide to stop and do something else, that she'd like to do something different, she wants to keep the ball moving, she's gotta understand that, no, you wait, and we'll do it when we're ready to do it, and adults make that decision. Well, the same is with her. She'd love to keep healing, probably. She'd probably heal pretty well, but she's not real big right now on the idea of just standing still and not doing anything. So she's saying, well, I'll jump on him. I'll see if I can get his attention that way. Uh, I'll pull a little bit over here. I'll fuss a little bit. When she jumped up on me, I didn't make a big deal of it. I didn't freak out, but I went, get off of me. Disrespectful, don't do that. That's it, now I forgot about it. I'm not holding a grudge against her. She's doing a wonderful job right now, good. So I'll come down to you and I'll tell you, that's what you're supposed to do. Just stand there and be patient. I like that, that's cultural and that's something that we try to make this a habit with consistency so that she goes, this is the acceptable behavior, and me throwing a fit is not gonna get things to change. And all of a sudden, slowing down and recognizing that we're gonna stand around for a lot of time becomes normal. And then that doesn't get annoying. Good. But you gotta have it, you gotta have an understanding of like, it's only so long with her. Her tension span is only, it's gauging what, how long is too long. Good. Yeah. So I'm gonna bring her back up to the house under control. She's gonna go into her kennel, sit. Can you sit for me? Sit, sit, good, good. Nice little ending right there. I'll pick her up, bring her back in the house, put her in her kennel, and this'll be it. This is a really good lesson for her to take and store away in, in her mind. Um, I think it's real important if we just let her run right now, what we just did would be really watered down and lost because by the time I caught her and got her convinced to come back in the house and then decided to put her in her kennel, I don't think she'd even remember this. Uh, I wanna take her right now, go put her up and let her just think. She'll be tired from it because I've asked her to use her brain again. Again, I'm, not, I'm just not big on the idea of turning dogs into great athletes and letting their bodies become untireable. I would rather balance it with the idea of mental work and physical work. They need to do both. 
but we need to find balance with it. So it's a real nice session for this little girl. We'll go put her back up.